All right, so we went to Niagara Falls, which is about an hour and a half away from this current location, and it was about $1,000 a night. However, there were a couple of things on the website, and when I spoke to the lady on the phone, she kind of lied. First off, the breakfast cost extra, which was mentioned in the package, and there was no room service. The only best thing about that was the view. Watch this. I'm currently here in Niagara Falls. This is one of the uh, most famous hotel is the Marriott, but yo. So that's the States. Over there. And. Can you guys hear that? I feel like I'm now officially one of those travel YouTubers. This is insane. Clearly couldn't travel anywhere, so I thought why not come to Niagara Falls, book a nice hotel for this amazing view. So that's the States right over there. And this is the Canada one, obviously. So you can see it's so loud here. That's the chopper tour. If you ever guys, if you guys ever come to Toronto, you guys come to come to Niagara Falls here, that's the chopper tour. I'm so excited. I have so much things to say. I don't even know where to start. Oh boy. Okay, I understand that because of COVID, the rules have, some rules have applied now staying in a hotel. But it would have been great if you could have just mentioned that in the hotel and maybe decrease the price a little bit so it kind of makes sense. Also, while we were sleeping, there was a noise every five minutes where the vent is. And when we called about it, they didn't really care much. So I've been like running around. Anyways, so for now, let me show you the hotel. This is the bed. This is an indoor sink. Keep your hands clean. That's the TV. And couch. Put up bed, I think. This is the study area. This is another chilling area, whatever. But you can see, can I open this? Oh my God. Oh my god. This is the whoa. Okay, so this is the bathtub, but you get this view. Look at the view you get. That's the tub. That's the view. This is the tub. That's the view. Wow. And obviously the most important piece <laughs> in the suite. So it's currently 11.05 p.m. And I want to show you guys the nighttime view of the fall. So check this out. It looks quite nice. Okay, so I've never done this before and it's my first time. I've never done a Q, Q and A. Pretty much question and answers. Jesus Christ, I'm so tired. Oh my God, what time is it right now? It is 4.04 p.m. Wow. Okay, so the first question is right over here. I took a screenshot of it. How did you get into UI UX designing? Okay, well, I've said this story a thousand times. I'm not sure how many times I've mentioned it in my channel. Long story short, I was 10 years old and I was watching this anime called Dragon Ball Z. If you guys do not know Dragon Ball Z, I don't even know what to say. Um, yeah, so I was really into Dragon Ball Z. I still am. And I saw my older brother create a Dragon Ball Z website, which really fascinated me into creating a website. And I built my own first Dragon Ball Z website and that's where I've learned web design. That's what it was called back in the days. Graphics, coding and everything. And yeah, that's how I became a uh, that's how I got into UX UI design. Hey Fahim, I am a beginner in learning UI UX. Is your tutorial for 
I think he's just trying to say beginners or advanced. I know Illustrator, peace sign. Yes, my channel is definitely towards beginners. If you if you are someone who wants to learn UX UI design, uh, especially on Adobe XD, you can check my channel out. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen some videos about you know design and stuff. So, yes, so it is for beginners. Long story short. Okay, so number four, I have like a few of these. Uh, okay, let's let's do this one. Tips on building portfolio, not website. Okay, this is very effective. I really like this question. Okay, so first off, majority of UX UI designer when they apply for a job on their portfolio, they have a lot of screens. And by that, I mean UI designs, like of the website apps and things like that. I personally believe that's like 40% of, uh, of, your, of your portfolio. The most important parts are showcasing your case studies, like discovery stage, if you, if you did sitemap, um, your UX process, mention those things. Uh, that will definitely help a lot in terms of getting you uh, interview. So I hope that makes sense. This is, this is the last one, very important one. I'm so confused about my portfolio. How can I improve portfolio without any project? And I feel like this question, this, this, this is a very popular question. I do get a lot, of, a lot of DMs about this. Okay, so number one, if you do not have a project, that's totally fine. You can literally create your own project. Like if there's something that you wish YouTube had either on the app or on the desktop, do that. Like design your portfolio based on that. Add a cool feature that you may believe might help the YouTube users. Um, if you're into Instagram, add a cool feature in that. Um, create a case study, show screens, and your UX project uh, process. Include that into your portfolio and trust me, it will help you guys get a job. Recruiters understand that you are new at this, like you have just entered the field. Therefore, this is wanna know what your UX process is, how you think, and your design skills. So let's include that. They know that you may not have a client or you, this project that you've done is pretty much for free. So uh, yeah, it's important to, to do that. I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions regarding that, please comment below. I don't think you can see this properly right now, but I'm currently working on loader screens. And there's a lot of them I gotta do. So, so let me show you what I mean. These are all of the UI, as you can see. And I have done these so far. These are all loaders. That is a loader screen. So that's pretty much if you click on any call to action and it goes to the next page, instead of having a bar going across or a circle thingy, which is quite old school now. Um, nowadays, it's a gray scale that kind of gradients left to right. And that's a indicator to let the users know it is currently loading. It's a, it's a lot better than just having a bar going all the way across or a circle thingy. I hope that makes sense. So this app here is going to be outsourced. So therefore, I want to make sure that I have every screen possible, like 404, any source of errors, loaders, um, all the screens of categories from beginning to end. Um, how would it look like if there is, uh, what do you call it? If the image d doesn't appear. So for example, if a page doesn't have an image, how is that going to look in a search result? Um, broken image um, UIs. There's so much things that I need to make sure that I have it completed before I, s I outsource the whole thing so that team can code it and program it and make sure everything is quite uh, correct or is whatever they are pretty much looking for. And I don't think this project will be completed from my end this month and we're at October. Man, there's a lot of stuff to do. If you do not know, this is how the set is, by the way. See, that's my new computer, desk, a light box, light box, ring light, and I put my camera right over there, you know, and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much how my set is, or my workstation is. So this is pretty much what I've been doing for uh, a month. I know it's been close to a month that I haven't uploaded anything. Last thing I've done was, last video I've uploaded was a, a sponsored video with Adobe, great event they had. Um, yeah, so I am here to let you know that my uploads are now back to normal. Next video, fingers crossed, is one of the videos for the free UX UI design course. 
and it's how to design your wireframe. So if you have not subscribed, if you like to this video, please like them and um, click on the bell icon and join the free course that I have going on. The playlist of that will be in description below. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.